Well, good morning, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you from gorgeous, partly cloudy San Antonio, Texas, the second most powerful, passionate, purposeful coach and speaker in the world. I'm excited today. You know, this is going to be a little break for those of you who follow my videos, a little, little baby break. Everybody needs a little break every now and then. And I know you know I go hard in the paint on serious, life-changing, life-altering questions and subjects. I go deep into life daily for intentional discomfort, creating cognitive dissonance in your mind, pushing you, I hope, to change and become all that you're capable of becoming. Today, it's gonna to be a little bit different. If you are new to sales, or you know somebody who is new to sales, I'm gonna share something with you that was shared with me 25 years ago when I went into sales for the very first time professionally. I was, I know, I know it's gonna be a little surprising, I was a very timid person, very timid when it came to sales. I was very timid, I was very concerned about how it come across, I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I wanted everybody to like me. I didn't want to be uncomfortable asking for the business. I didn't want to be uncomfortable talking to people. I was actually very nervous. And the truth of the matter was, because I did not yet know that when you refuse to invest abundantly in yourself, how can you really expect with integrity other people to invest abundantly in you? You get what you deserve in your imagination and subconsciously if you're not putting in the hard work on you, why would you feel worthy of earning what you could potentially earn? And the flip side is when you begin investing in yourself, when you begin personally growing and developing yourself, when you are putting in the blood, sweat, tears, and hours in becoming all that you can be, it becomes very easy to defend your value and your worth unapologetically. I used to love to tell people that were to ask me, why should we hire you? There were several reasons I gave them, but I said the main reason was I work harder on myself than I do on my business, you see, because my business will only grow to the extent that I do, and I actually pay more for my coaching than I do for my house and I've invested more in my non-required continuing education than I've invested in my cars, and I'm a car guy, I have some cool cars. So the reason you should hire me is because I am the machine that's gonna be serving you with a very high level of world-class excellence because of what I've invested into myself, and that's something I'm not willing to compromise because the investment is significant. So where does this come? What advice can you give people who are newer to sales? I'll give you the advice that my original mentor gave me because this is when Angela and I had first gotten married and we were broke. I mean, broke, 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 like somebody dropping a wine glass from a second store building. Baroque. We was barely getting by, I mean, barely getting by. Barely, barely, barely getting by. Our folks had to come in every now and then and help us out because we were just broke. You see, we believed we could pay our bills on love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she was 20, I was 25, and we thought, hey, we can do this thing in our little 500 square foot, one bedroom, one bath efficiency. So Angela and I were Baroque. And here's the advice my mentor gave me. Go get five $100 bills and keep them in your front pocket at all times. And when you are walking up and down the sales floor, you have your hand in that pocket touching them $100 bills. Now, of course, the first thing I said was, I don't have $500 to do that. And he said, exactly. That's why you're operating out of fear and out of lack. It's a problem. I don't care what you have to do to go get it. Go sell something, get that money. Go beg, borrow to get that money. Go get your credit card and get that money. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will remind you, this was 25 years ago, okay? 25 years ago, $500 was a lot of money for a little green salesman that didn't know Shiite from Shinola. <laughs> and I understood one thing at that age that I still understand today. Be humble, be coachable, learn from those who are succeeding at a higher level than you, 
in whatever area you are desiring that growth. Ask yourself, when advised by a person, would I switch places with that woman? Would I switch places with that man in that area in my life right now to be at the level they are? If you can say yes to that, then listen to the advice. If you cannot say yes to that, don't listen to the advice. I love when guys come to me and go, you're married for 20 years with seven kids. Man, I got some good marriage advice for you. I should know I've been married five times. I'm like, yeah, man, I think I want to know what you did to blow it five times. I don't need you advising me on marriage. You need to tell me how to not do what you did that messed you up. So listen to who you're paying attention to and decide if that's a worthy source of revelation and information for you. So when Mr. Ramos told me, go get $500, I had a very hard conversation with Angela about going and getting $500 out on a credit card. I stuck those five $100 bills in my pocket. I did exactly what he said. I walked that showroom floor. And when customers came on that showroom floor, the last thing on my mind was that I was hurting for money or that I was in a lack situation. My confidence was being built. My confidence was being built because I knew, hey, anything goes wrong, I got like $500 here. That probably be, you know, me like, I don't know, carrying five grand in my pocket today, 25 years ago at 26 years old with no skills. I literally remember feeling different about myself just doing that one thing. Now you see this lines up with a quote from Zig Ziglar where Zig says, it is impossible to consistently perform in a manner that is inconsistent with your self-image. Let me say that one more again for you to take it in real good. It is impossible for you to consistently perform in a manner which is not in agreement with or does not line up with your self-image. So the way you see yourself and the secrets you know about yourself cause you to either show up powerfully or cause you to show up weakly. And I don't mean every week. I mean weak. Like, <laughs> sales is hard. I used to be in sales. It's a tough racket. That's what I'm talking about. If you are not investing in you, if you're not putting in the time, effort, and energy to build and develop your skill set, if you're not working on the things that you know make you worthy of earning the type of income you are deserving of, then you are likely gonna blow every sale. Are you in sales? Do you need to build your self-confidence? Are you new in sales? Carry five $100 bills in your pocket. Put your hand in your pocket every now and when you feel a little bit insecure, rub them Benjis and go, okay, 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 I got it. Now, for my, um, for my church friends, um, adjust your halo real quick. Don't get weird on me. Okay, don't get weird on me, like Zig Ziglar used to say when his church friends would adjust their halo and say, Zig, you talk about money an awful lot, Zig. Zig, is, money is all that important because the money is really not that important to me. And he said, well, I found people that will lie about one thing, will lie about other things too. Money isn't everything. It is not everything. Yet it ranks right up there with oxygen in the gotta have it category in your life. Don't believe me? Try living without it, all right? And he also recognized that it's a service thing. It's a service thing. It's not a getting thing. You can have everything in life you want that might cost money. If you'll just help enough other people get what they want. You see, you start from a servant's mentality. Serve more people, earn more income. Pretty simple equation there, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm not talking about it's a money thing. Certainly your faith is in the good Lord and his ability to provide. I'm giving you a little tool, a trick of the trade to mess with your head so that you start feeling a little bit different about how you show up when you are talking to people. You got a pocket full of Benjis when you're in sales you're going to feel different about you. You're going to have a little extra pep in your step. You're going to have a little extra confidence. You're going to have that little extra boost. It will never replace you investing in yourself, in your mind, in your learning, in your education, in your personal growth and development for your business to grow. You got to grow because your business will only grow to the extent that you do. And you are probably like 98% of the planet where you are very comfortable being comfortable, even if your comfort is a pile of steaming crap. Like Dave Ramsey says, people in a financial mess have a hard time getting out of it because they're like a baby in a poop diaper saying, I know it stinks. I know it stinks. I know it's nasty, but it's warm and it's all mine. You are familiar with living significantly below the line of privilege available to you 
because you have not yet learned how to develop the habit of pressing hard and overcoming the obstacles that are temporarily frustrating and painful so that you can ultimately live a much bigger life because you have become the type of person who can push through those situations. Are you new in sales? Need a little boost? Go get you out $500 bills, put them in your pocket. And when you're doing your thing, you have a little genie bottle down there that you can say, okay, 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 I'm good. It's just a little thing that can become a big thing if you'll take action today. Have a great day, guys.